bill needs all Senate Democrats and independents to agree on it in order to pass it into law using that budget reconciliation process, which evades a Republican filibuster can pass in a party line vote. Now, it is in addition to the nearly $580 billion bipartisan infrastructure bill for roads, highways, bridges, and major public works projects. Senate Democratic leaders hope to advance both the bills on a dual track system before Congress leaves for August recess. All right, so I wanted to get into this analysis as it pertains to Bernie Sanders and the fellow Senate Democrats coming to an agreement as it pertains to the $3.5 trillion infrastructure budget agreement. Now, what the specifics are as it pertains to what's in this Senate Democrat consensus $3.5 trillion infrastructure budget agreement as opposed to the bipartisan budget agreement. The distinguishing elements that are found are issues pertaining to not only roads and bridges, but human infrastructure and human infrastructure that has long been neglected. Now, what does Bernie Sanders mean in terms of that? That includes Medicare expansion to cover dental, vision, as well as hearing coverage, as well as uh, clean standards in terms of clean energy standards that should be met with as it pertains to universal pre-K and also as it pertains to paid family and medical leave. And moreover, and here's the crucial part, no tax hikes for small businesses distinguishing between big, big, big business and people making under, under $400,000. That's the human infrastructure aspect that's being incorporated. That the bipartisan roads, bridges, infrastructure bill does not take into consideration. Now, remember, we've got to put this into context and perspective. The only way this is going to get through, and Chris Hayes and Bernie Sanders also discussed this, is if it's supported by all independents as well as Democrats. And, of course, that includes individuals like Joe Manchin. Of course, he's been an issue as it pertains to him disagreeing not only with the center and about a quarter to the left Democrats slash independents like Bernie Sanders, but also even agreeing with individuals found within the context of uh, a more establishment uh, democratic approach. Because remember, this is coming under the Biden administration now. This is no doubt has components of progressive policies rooted in it. Would it have been great if Medicare, as it pertains to the eligibility age, was expanded as well, meaning 65 to 55? I've been long arguing to bring it down to 50, if that's some sort of an agreement that can be achieved with the, the centrist Democrats. But that's not being dealt with. All that's happening as it pertains to Medicare, and it's crucial and it's important and should be duly highlighted, is expansion coverage as it pertains to dental vision and hearing coverage. Once again, clean energy standards are to be met with, universal pre-K, affordable child care, paid family medical leave, no tax hikes for people making under $400,000. That's the human infrastructure elements that are being incorporated. If this bill and or agreement, I should be more specific, passes through, it's definitely a progressive accomplishment especially as it pertains to the Biden administration. This is definitely going to assist those that are found within the context of the middle and lower classes. And such policies have been long not being incorporated into the body politic. So this is definitely that something progressives should be content with and even satisfied with. Obviously, it would have been even better if it had, as it pertains to expanding the eligibility age of Medicare but nonetheless there are still important and vital issues that are being dealt with that have been long 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 neglected especially as it pertains to Democrats Democrats let alone Republicans but here's some of the analysis that Bernie Sanders provides at an even deeper level as it pertains to his interview with Chris Hayes with what is in this bill it's been a little hard to keep track of everything, both in the negotiations, there's been a bunch of proposals in the White House, there was a bunch of proposals from the Budget Committee, so so just sort of top line, what, what are we talking about here? Okay, what we're talking about 
is the understanding that for decades working families have been struggling, the very rich have been getting richer, and you got billionaires and large corporations that pay in a given year nothing in taxes. Point number one, this bill will substantially raise taxes on the richest people in this country and the largest corporations. That's number one. Number two, for decades we have ignored the needs of working families. Everybody knows that we have a child care system which is dysfunctional. In my state, $15,000 a year, that's about average nationally. Pre-K, the same. We have a higher education system where kids can't afford to go to college or leaving school deeply in debt. Under the proposal we are bringing forth, no family in America would pay more than 7% of their income for child care, universal, pre-K, free tuition at public colleges and universities. This legislation ends the international disgrace, Chris. We're the only country on earth that doesn't provide paid family and medical leave. We're going to end that. We are going to deal in the most aggressive way imaginable with the housing crisis, where you've got 18 million families paying 50% of their limited incomes on housing. We're dealing in the other bipartisan bill with the physical infrastructure. And of course, we are making the largest investment in this country's history in transforming our energy system away from fossil fuel to combat the existential threat of climate change, among many other provisions. In other words, what the president has done and what we have done is said, you know what, let's look at the crises facing working families and the planet. Let's address those crises.